Welcome to Disciple. Today, we're thinking about God's priority. What should come first in the life of a disciple of Jesus? Right at the end of his time on this earth, Jesus gave this last command to his disciples. He said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This command is for you and for me and for everyone. Jesus calls us to become his disciples and to make disciples of others throughout this planet. But what is a disciple of Jesus Christ? Let's start by learning something together. The most important thing is that the most important thing always remains the most important thing. Let's say it again together. The most important thing is that the most important thing always remains the most important thing. So what is the most important thing to God? What is he looking for in us? Someone once asked Jesus that very question, what is the most important thing? The Bible says an expert in the law tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Every other commandment in the Bible, Jesus was saying, flows from these two. That's the most important thing. So, what is the most important thing? Well, it's love, because the Bible says God is love. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And remember, the most important thing is that the most important thing always remains the most important thing. It's love. And Jesus said that if others cannot see the difference, if others cannot see love in action in us, then we're no disciple of his whatever we may call ourselves. Jesus said, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now here's the thing, love, who could ever be offended by that? Surely everyone's going to agree with love, aren't they? Let me tell you something that might surprise you. This kind of love got Jesus into all kinds of trouble. And if you and I decide to become a disciple of Jesus, then it just might get you and me into trouble too. This kind of love also comes with a big price tag. 
And the question is, are you and I ready for that? On January the 8th, 1956, Jim Elliott, Nate Saint, and three other Christian missionaries landed their aeroplane in a remote part of Ecuador. They had wanted to tell the people of the Orca tribe about the love of Jesus. And sadly, they were all killed that day by the tribesmen. What happened next? Jim's wife, Elizabeth, and Nate's sister, Rachel, then spent the next two years learning the Orca language from two tribeswomen who had fled the tribe. In October 1958, Elizabeth Elliot, her three-year-old daughter, Valerie, and Rachel Saint went to go and live with the very tribe that had killed their husband, father and brother. And the two tribeswomen that had taught them the language and that they had befriended helped by introducing them to the tribe. As a result of that, the entire tribe became Christians. Elizabeth and Valerie stayed with them for two years, but Rachel stayed living with the tribe until she died in 1994. Why did those Christians do that? Risking and giving, well, everything to tell a remote tribe about the love of Jesus. They did it for the same reason that Jesus himself risked and gave everything. The only good reason is love. The Bible says of Jesus when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Oh, how did our thing go? The most important thing is that the most important thing always remains the most important thing. The love of Jesus was the most important thing to these disciples of his. The love of Jesus was, well, even more important to them than life itself. Jesus sets us this example of love, and it is a high bar. While we were far from him and doing everything that he says is wrong, that was when Jesus laid down his life to pay the price for our forgiveness. The Bible says God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, you see, at just the right time. When we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible also says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus commands his disciples, you and me, to love others as I have loved you. That is a very costly, sacrificial kind of love. And it's a long, long way from the cheap, giving a few coppers to charity kind of love. This love is total sacrifice. Are you ready for that? 
The Bible says just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He inquired. Jesus replied, well, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honour your father and mother and love your neighbour as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell all your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away, sad, because he had great wealth. The rich young man wanted Jesus as an add-on to his life. He wanted a few good deeds and a bit of religion and to carry on much as before. And sadly, many who go to church and many who call themselves Christians actually live like that. Jesus is an add-on. Jesus told that rich young man that to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, the price was total commitment to loving others. Sell your possessions, he said, give to the poor, then come and follow me. Total commitment to love, a total love for God and a total love for others. And this, Jesus said, is the most important thing. Love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Love, love your neighbour as yourself. It's all or nothing, Jesus said. It's, well, take it or leave it. And the rich young man walked away. Sadly, he wanted Jesus, yes. But not if Jesus had to be the most important thing. He didn't want that. Let's say it together again. The most important thing is that the most important thing always remains the most important thing. Some who call themselves Christians, who believe in Jesus, have no spiritual home. They don't go to church, as we say. Now, I've got every sympathy with that. There may be reasons, there may be very good reasons why that state of affairs came about. However, although such a person can call themselves a Christian, they cannot call themselves an obedient disciple of Jesus. And it's not about how many church services we go to. That's not the point. Jesus said, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And when Jesus said this, he was specifically describing love within the Christian community, within the local Christian church. You cannot obey that commandment on your own. You can only do it as part of a close, loving Christian community. This is a lot more, a whole lot more than just turning up to church services, you know, going to church. A church like that is described by the Bible in these words, all the believers were together 
They had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts and they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. This church was a close, loving community. They shared their time, they shared their lives and they were generous to one another. Are you and I ready for that kind of commitment, for that kind of love? And it has to be a two-way street. A love that is humble enough to serve and to give and a love that is humble enough to receive. No wonder these first Christians were enjoying the favour of all the people. No wonder so many others wanted to join their church. That kind of love is so very attractive. But you and I, are we ready for that? Are we ready for the cost of it? Our challenge today is, will you, will I, choose to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Let's end our time together by reflecting on the things we have heard today. Are we trying to treat Jesus as a bolt-on to our lives? Are we holding out on Jesus, saying that we believe, but not willing to give him total commitment? And are we willing to commit ourselves to love within the context of the local Christian church? Let's end our time with, together with a prayer. Father God, help us to reflect on what you have said to us today through the scriptures. Help us to truly live as your disciples, obedient, loving. Help us to love with the love that we see in you and to make this the most important thing. Help us to love like this as a part of the local church. Amen.